we're finally here. A movie that is has been announced for essentially two years, um, and it just came out last week via Disney Plus Early Access as well as movie theaters, if you can believe it. That's right, folks. Black Widow is finally here since the initial Phase 4 announcement that took place two summers ago. Now, obviously, with this being Knights of the Dirty Table, spoilers ahead. Duh, you know what you signed up for at this point by oh tuning boy. into the show, folks. But I just thought I would get it out so of the way. So many spoilers. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put it in the uh, stream title because <laughs> we, we need to do that. I mean, whatever. But anyway, <laughs> thanks, fam. So, let me start off with some very quick notes on Black Widow, and then I'll get to my main point here. Uh, Black Widow's a great movie. Shouldn't be surprised. I've kind of been a Marvel Studios homer for a while now. In my opinion, it ties Black Panther as probably the best solo movie that doesn't include characters from other Marvel franchises. So Captain America 3 wouldn't count. Thor Ragnarok wouldn't count. Really, even Captain America 2 wouldn't count. I wouldn't even put uh, Captain Marvel in that class because... That story had Nick Fury in it, which I consider as like an Avengers character separately, and that really contributed to the story. So it's a very limited list. You can kind of go through and, and figure out, you know, what fits where exactly. But I would say it's probably up there as far as the best solo movies that don't include other uh, Marvel characters from separate movie franchises. So speaking of those characters, uh, they were strong. I think they were really strong. The role of Black Widow going forward... Uh, presumably with Florence Pugh as Yelena. Uh, I think it's in great hands. Uh, I think she's giving the uh, Black Widow mantle a totally different cinematic twist that I think is going to be very healthy, very welcome. I'm very glad that she is officially signed on for the Hawkeye series, which obviously was hinted at in the post credit scenes. Again, all the spoilers, but she's officially coming back for more Marvel shenanigans, and we're obviously here for that. Um... Personally, I never exactly cared for Taskmaster comic book-wise, so the plot twist, I wasn't angered that Taskmaster was a girl, God forbid, but uh, I thought it was a very healthy twist, and I liked that it related to uh, Natasha Romanoff, personally. It wasn't just necessarily a one-off villain. It was something that was very close to Natasha's character, and being able to turn what really I think was meant to be uh, a throwaway line in Avengers 1 where Loki is talking to Black Widow uh, in, uh, aboard the helicarrier and such, you know, mentioning Drakoff's daughter and Red Ledger and all that stuff. That was just meant to be, like, mild backstory stuff, but that those lines were actually the basis for this whole movie. And I thought um, that the entire company was able to do a really great job of, of taking what was just back dialogue and turning it into a fully fleshed out movie that gave Natasha Romanoff all the character development that honestly a lot of us have been asking for for a very long time. Now, let me admit to something here. I admit that I whiffed. And there's proof of me whiffing in some of the previous Nights of the Dirty Table clips that we have, which you can obviously check out on YouTube now. Um, originally, I was not actually asking for a Black Widow movie. Um, almost any comic book character can have a story centered around them and make it work. This goes for any DC character. This goes for any Image Comics character. Like, you can really have almost any hero, regardless on if they're high up on the food chain uh, with popularity. You can really center a story around everyone. But I wasn't as interested in having a movie centered around Natasha Romanoff. Uh, the biggest thing that stood out to me with that argument was who is she going to fight when there are plenty of other villains that you could have thrown in for other various MCU projects. Now, quite frankly, turns out the answer to that was she needed to fight herself and her own past in a way and mistakes that had occurred previously before getting to this point in the movie. And I think that was actually the right call, so I was wrong in that regard. I also wasn't into having her... Into, I wasn't into her having her own movie because I wasn't actually as enthralled with this version of Natasha Romanoff. I don't think this... How would I put it? Um, I also, I will say, I wasn't exactly expecting Marvel to have four years... Sorry, four movies a year as well. So now that we've opened up plenty of room for people to have their own stories that also has changed my opinion as well. Back then, we were only getting like two or three movies a year. Now we're getting four. So it doesn't matter. There's plenty of room for a bunch of Marvel characters to go around. I just didn't think there was enough pr prior material for Natasha Romanoff to have, 
leading up to her own movie. So that's why I wasn't as excited for it. But I also didn't realize how important Black Widow was as a female superhero on screen. Not that I was unaware of how like badass she was or anything, but in the 20 years that we've had of the modern superhero movie, you know, Blade, Trilogy, X-Men, Universe, Spider-Man, and even, you know, DC with most of their Batman and Superman movies, we've only had three and a half franchises that have had a female in the title. Um, you had Wonder Woman, which honestly had a remarkable first film that definitely opened up my eyes to a broader universe of characters that could be displayed on screen. And it had an even better sequel, in my humble opinion. But now the franchise kind of feels stuck in limbo after mixed reviews from said sequel. Ant-Man and the Wasp, that's my half. Uh, it was really good for what it was after an Infinity War break, but it was very formulaic within the MCU. And then there is Captain Marvel, as I mentioned before, but it relied on having an Avengers precursor character in Nick Fury that, in my opinion, took away it took away from Captain Marvel's development. So sh she couldn't truly shine in the way that I think maybe some of us would have wanted her to. And also, the Black Widow film could not have been made 10 years ago, even if you tried. And actually, when Marvel was selling off their rights and such, New Line Cinema had the rights to a Black Widow movie, but they just weren't sure what to do with it. They didn't know how to market it. So it sat with New Line Cinema, which eventually became a Warner Brothers property. So imagine if... Warner Brothers had made a Black Widow movie. That probably would not have gone well, but that's that's a multiverse theory for another day, folks. Um, I don't think Hollywood knew exactly what to do with female action stars, uh, especially in the early 2000s. The writing would have been terribly sexist, and no, no, if no, 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 no. the no, said movie no. had a female action star, it would have had most likely a male director or a male screenwriter, or even more likely, both. Even in past MCU movies, early MCU movies, we've had sexualized characters, whether they be uh, reflective of their character or within their costume. The best costume in the MCU now belongs to Scarlet Witch, like actual Scarlet Witch, officially called Scarlet Witch from the WandaVision series. That is probably the best outfit I've ever seen, female superhero-wise. Black Widow's sexualization has always been a weapon in her arsenal for decades in the comic book lore, so I'm not trying to, you know, completely go against the comic book lovers here. But she's also viewed as a piece of property in some ways. Like in Iron Man 2, for example, when we were first introduced to her and Tony's going through the whole sequence of uh, Natalie, I believe was her undercover name, where she's doing the whole fashion shoot. And in retrospect, that dialogue has not aged well, um, and I don't think Natasha Romanoff needed to be reflected in the way that she was uh, by that dialogue in Iron Man 2, just as one example. This film, Black Widow, is great, and I look forward to even better female-led films um, going past this level, like the Marvels, the upcoming Captain Marvel sequel featuring Ms. Marvel and obviously Captain Marvel, and a uh, spectrum. So that's going to be an already great lineup, and I already think it's going to be better than said first film because it's going to be female superheroes leading their own story without a man having to hold them back in a way. Again, I admit that I was wrong to not ask for a film centered around Black Widow. There's proof of me being wrong. Again, in past clips, you can go check them out. I've learned in the past few years that Marvel Studios is the best film company to hire the best people to do the best job, which wasn't always the case back when Marvel Studios was completely under the Marvel Entertainment umbrella. And since then, they've gone out of their way again to branch out and be their own person, as I've mentioned before. And now they're overseeing almost all the creative uh, opportunities that Marvel can provide to said consumer. Marvel Studios, and now Marvel Entertainment, uh, for the most part, they're always looking to improve and do better on not just their own storytelling methods, but also the characters that they have in their arsenal and the reflections of those characters. I mean, just wait for Shang-Chi. That's going to be vastly different than I think anyone could have expected uh, with that film franchise. Now I see it. Black Widow was actually quite necessary. Uh, it was necessary to be made 
uh, for Hollywood. I think it's better now than it would have been even five years ago when Civil War was out. Just as Wonder Woman opened my eyes to how much we need more female representation uh, amongst our on-screen heroes. Black Widow has shown me what many have been seeing for a long time now that I wasn't quite as aware of. If a character is badass and they resonate with said audience, that means that somebody's doing something right. You shouldn't ignore it. You should embrace it and develop it and nurture it and let it grow into something that is just absolutely iconic for the entire world to fall in love with. Black Widow is an embracement by the fan base. Many of us did not see that until now with this recent release. And for that, I think I can speak for some of us when I say, we're sorry. We whiffed. It's a great story. And we're very glad that it exists in the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Whoa. Welcome to the end of the Knights of the Dirty Table video that you just watched. Thank you so much for watching. If you haven't already done so, make sure you subscribe to our channel, like our video, share with all your friends, and catch our live stream every Friday live at 5 only on the Zen Den Studios Twitch channel. I gotta go wander off into space. See ya! Whoa! Whoa!